So Mark, did you see that video of the Vegas pedicab driver on a hot summer day, wheeling what, four or five people, they're chilling on their cell phones, this guy's barely moving, what a tough job. It was such a struggle bus, man, it was hard to watch, I felt so bad for him, and it's definitely not a good fit for Vegas, it reminds me of uh, my Mexico City experience with one which I'm sure we'll dive into in the the Patreon show. So what is the toughest job in Vegas? Work in the Chris Angel ticket booth. <laughs> <laughs> Over the last couple of years, Mark Wahlberg moved to town and all this talk about Hollywood East. And then earlier this year, Tony partnered up with Howard Hughes Company to announce their big movie studio up in Summerlin. And we also have another movie studio that they've been talking about that's UNLV over on Durango. And Warner Brothers has announced that they're going to invest $8.4 billion in investment in movies if they'll pass all these tax packages. Basically, they want kickbacks for everything. So uh, this happened in 2023. It didn't get passed. So they're going to try to bring it up next year again to get these tax incentives. And if that's the case, we'll have Warner Brothers and Sony. Yeah, I don't know that these ever really work out that well. I mean, we've talked about stadium, you know, giving money for building stadiums to billionaires and stuff ad nauseum. And we had something similar in Michigan years and years ago. And it brought a lot of movies here. A lot of things got filmed here, which was kind of cool. And you could see places that you recognize and everything. Uh, but it didn't end up bringing the, the bountiful amount of taxes and jobs and all that stuff that they thought it would. And basically, as soon as you pull these away, they tend to leave. So I'm not usually for these type of things. I think one area where this will be different is our geographical location close to Los Angeles. So it's a cheaper alternative there. And uh, this will be at the Harry Reid Research and Technology Park, which is part of UNLV. So Harry Reid, his big name on something else, huge here. And it is on Durango, just across from the Ikea, down the street from Durango Casino, and not too far from where the Sony studios will be so we'll see it's interesting to see the concept art and you have these sound stages with desert in the background so different than what you usually see with a movie studio the location makes a lot of sense the land you know that you can build on and i did the universal tour in la and then that, that lot is like packed full and stuff so as they can open up more of these type of things if they can build something big i think it will make a lot of sense i just don't know how much money you have to give to make this a possibility and if that's worth it to the people of las vegas but i mean it would be cool to see and and you'd have a lot more celebrities in town not that you need them but <laughs> poor mark Wahlberg. if other celebrities come then uh he's gonna be out on the on the fringe <laughs> oh to say that more Wahlbergers. <laughs> today we're partnering with golden nugget online casino to bring another great deal to mtm vegas viewers the Golden Nugget online casino app helps turn life's mundane tasks into golden moments by allowing you to play all of your favorite games right on your phone. And even better, they're offering a great deal for our viewers. New customers who sign up using our promo code M2M will get $77 in site credits with a $7 minimum deposit. I do all my mundane playing in the same place I do my best thinking, in the bathroom, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing Gold Nugget here for a couple of years in Michigan. I love the app. Over 300 live action games, real money wagers. You can do blackjack, roulette, live dealer, slots, a ton of new games. I've loved the updates that they've done with the app over the years, added new games. It's safe, secure, reliable in my experience, and I've enjoyed using it. Download the Golden Nugget Online Casino app today to get the Vegas experience right on your phone. Once again, new customers can get $77 in site credits by using the code M2M and making a $7 minimum deposit. Make any moment golden with the Golden Nugget Online Casino app. What are you waiting for? Download the app right now, use promo code M2M, and get the casino site credits to get your game started. Thanks to Golden Nugget Online Casino for sponsoring this video. So Venetian is in the news this week for a couple of reasons. Starting with the union, the culinary union has made a deal for 4,000 of Venetian's workers to join the union. This is big news because these are the last two big resorts on the Las Vegas Strip that were not union. And that's because Sheldon Adelson, who used to own Venetian, he was very anti-union. And so uh, Apollo Management, who now owns them, they in the past have owned everything from Harrah's to other casinos, and they've worked with the union in the past. About a year ago, they said that they were starting the negotiations, and now they've come to terms on a package which needs to be ratified. But this is a huge deal for the workers there and a big win for Ted Papa Giorgio. <laughs> Which isn't his name, but we just like to say it like that. This is good news for the union workers. And it's interesting to see what has it been like 25 years that they've been open and they didn't have the union in there. And we knew as soon as he moved on, passed away, that it, it was going to be more likely to happen. And I'm sure COVID didn't help that if they were trying to keep the union out with 
you know, the cutbacks and the longer hours and making people work more for less and everything probably really fueled that this fire, I think. But it's good that it's settled and, and they can move on, move forward for the workers and for the property. Yeah, it's Ted Papa George, obviously a Vegas vacation reference. And I'll keep saying Papa Giorgio, I hope he <laughs> forgives me. Another Venetian related story is we got to look inside the renovated conference center. They announced that they were doing that conference center renovations, not huge news, but it was very old worldly Italian style before it definitely needed a renovation looks much more modern keeping some Italian theming. And this does G2E. That's usually where I experience it. So it's good to see this. Yeah, it looks really nice. It, it kind of gives me like Bellagio vibes with the color scheme and everything. And, and that's a lot of similar what we've seen across Vegas, but I think it looks beautiful and lots of space and, and a good update. So in sports news, the Little League World Series, Henderson, Nevada, they've made it to the semifinals. In fact, it's Paseo Verde, which plays just down the street from my house. So my local team, so good for them. They started 2-0. and It's a double elimination. They lost to Texas. They play Florida. If they win that game, they'll go to the U.S. finals and uh, close to going on further. So let's cheer for Henderson, Nevada, Las Vegas representing. Yeah, always cool to see, and especially when it's somebody local. And I love that, you know, Little League World Series, it's not like it's the same teams every year. It seems like people come can come out of nowhere and, and make it pretty far in that. So it's cool to see. When I was 11, we moved here to Las Vegas, but the people I went to school with and played with in Northridge, California, won the Little League World Series. So they were all my friends and at the same age group as me. And that was really cool. But we probably have some big kids on our team because of all the buffets in Las Vegas. And the, speaking of that, that's a terrible transition, but, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Uh, there was this controversy about the Bellagio buffet, a rumor from both Las Vegas locally and Vital Vegas saying that Bellagio was going to close their buffet in exchange for a food hall, which there's also been controversy about Bellagio. Do they need more lower end food offerings, things like that? But we'll leave that talk to another day. But it was interesting because the review journal threw a ton of shade at them by saying, despite some breathless social media rumoring to the contrary, the buffet at the Bellagio is staying, and that was confirmed by Bellagio. Now, they're open for basically breakfast, lunch, or brunch, but they only have dinner Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 8 p.m., so it's very interesting that they're not open for dinner like all of the more premier buffets, but Bellagio doubled down, and uh, Review Journal attacked the social media accounts, and those social media accounts love to attack the Review Journal. So much animosity here in the Vegas scene. Yeah, I, I, caught, I picked up what they were laying down on that stuff, the shade was uh, pretty hefty and uh, at first I thought oh this must be Johnny Katz that's writing this because I know that they all hate each other but it wasn't even uh, Johnny Katz so that was kind of funny uh, yeah it, it's interesting you know that this seemed like it was a locked in rumor that they got from a reliable source but we all know how rumors can end up and, and everything like that. And watch Bellagio, maybe we'll do it in like three months anyway. I, I know you didn't want to really talk about this so much, but I do think if there was one bu a buffet to go away that could use a food hall or, you know, a food court, it, it might be Bellagio just because they don't really have a grab and go or, or lower end. And I know people that stay at Bellagio probably don't want that and they, they think that would take away from it. But I think it, it could be a fit there. Yeah, I agree. They only have that one sort of fast food outlet there that's not very good, but they are, remember, expanding. So they're going to do that addition that's going to connect them to Cosmo, which will mean Cosmo's food hall is much more accessible. And so by putting that whole campus together, I think that may solve some of the issues there. I think whether people have a lot of money and they're rich and they want to stay at Bellagio or just normal people who are staying, because remember, Bellagio can be under $200, which is fairly affordable for that level of property. There's people that want everything. So I do agree with you. It could happen. And it's strange that they're not open for dinner. So they don't have the demand there that some of the other buffets do. So another nutty story is Seven Magic Mountains. That's that artistic piece of work that's south of the Las Vegas Strip, outside the city. Beautiful. A lot of people visit there. If you drive by, there's always people in the parking lot. And then this story came out that this lady from the art museum up in Washoe County, up in northern Nevada, is trying to get funding to move it by the end of 2026. Now, she said that it's because of the expansion of Harry Reid International Airport, which I believe is about 20 to 30 miles away from there. We also know the Ivanpah Airport is a potential airport that's coming in 10 or 15 years, but that's nowhere near this either because that's between Gene and Prim. So basically, she goes and says, it's the airport expansion. We need to move this to northern Nevada. I think she's just trying to steal it. <laughs> when I saw this, I'm like, wait, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I even pulled up like Google Maps. I'm like, okay, yeah, like what? What are we talking about here? This is weird, and I don't get it. Like, just go get your own stack of boulders and put some spray paint on them. I don't know why you need to move it. <laughs> yeah, I did a little bit of uh, research trying to figure out what the heck she meant. 
And it seems like there may be a land lease with the BLM, which owns the land that expires at the end of 2026. What I have found out is the artist is going to determine where it goes. And I hope he can find a place in Southern Nevada if they do have to move it from that spot. I'm sure there's plenty of places that will want to have it. And I think it needs to stay out in the middle of the desert. I think that's part of the art, not just put it in a museum or put it in the middle of the city. Yeah, I don't think it would be a stark contrast if, it, you know, that's what kind of makes it unique and something different. If you just kind of put it in between buildings or something. It just, it wouldn't feel the same way. It wouldn't look the same way. So I agree with you there. As a reminder, we have our Patreon, $5 a month, get you access to the after show, all of Mark's pedicab stories, everything else, patreon.com forward slash MTM Vegas. Thanks to everybody who supports us over there. So another thing I saw on social media this week was this 1983 time lapse of driving to Las Vegas. This is really neat. And I started coming to Las Vegas in 1987, I think. And so kind of a similar sort of thing. And you see Prim State Line before the big casinos were built with that big tower, which was kind of cool. You also get to see the old Aladdin. You kind of got to pause it in certain places in order to see the things because it's a time lapse. And it wasn't done digitally or anything. Apparently, the guy cut the film in order to build this time lapse, which is even cooler. But it's always nice to see those sorts of historic looks. Yeah, it was really cool to see. And I loved how it was like sped up without being sped up and, and kind of the artistic touch to that. But so when did you get thrown in the uh, the casino pokey, though? Was that in the 80s? Or was that early 90s? Uh, that had to be I was probably seven or eight. Yeah, it probably had to be either late 80s, maybe 1990 ish, right in there in the uh, cellar of the Tropicana behind bars. Rest <laughs> in peace. <laughs> yeah, that's a throwback to what was, did we talk about that? Like on our first podcast podcast, not even YouTube. I forget when we told that story, but a good one if you haven't listened to it. Yeah, for sure. Another throwback here is Rick Springfield. He's going to be at Fremont. And the reason I want to bring this up is because Rick Springfield was the fourth star of EFX at MGM Grand. Of course, Rick Springfield was a rock star or whatever before that. What it was it in the 80s? And then eventually he found his way on the Las Vegas Strip. EFX started with Michael Crawford, then David Cassidy, then Tommy Toon, which was the most eclectic version of it. And then Rick Springfield. But he'll be on Fremont Street October 5th at 9 p.m. on the First Street stage. This is not the first time he's done Fremont Street. Very popular if you want to go see him. And if you want to see EFX Alive, which was the last version, the one that he was in, you can find a whole video of it on YouTube. It was definitely like a throwback in time. But can we talk about this flyer, the pamphlet, the ad? What, when is that picture from? <laughs> is it super touched up? Like he looks like he's 35. And what is he like 70, 75 now? I mean, he does he's look good for a 75 year old, but I don't know what that flyer is. He's timeless. <laughs> This is a long show, but I have to talk about Tommy Toon really quick with EFX because Tommy Toon was known as like a tap dancer. The guy was like six foot eight. And in his version of the show, and for people who don't know, they would rewrite the show every time a new star would come on. My dad worked on it, so I kind of knew a little behind the scenes. One point during EFX, it would stop and Tommy Toon would do like a and a with the audience for five minutes and then do tap dancing. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen if that version's on YouTube, but guess, hopefully it is. I guess EFX. we have different definitions of fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so more entertainment news. Janet is coming to Resorts World. Janet Jackson, this was a rumor from TMZ about a month ago, and they now confirm that it's happening December 30th, 31st, January 3rd and 4th, and then February 5th to the 15th. Enough shows that we can call it a residency, Mark? I mean, it's like right on the cusp there. I, I kind of expected more shows. I think it'll be cool that she's there. And I would imagine, wouldn't you think that they would add more shows after this if the sales are pretty decent? It just seems like it's kind of like, not a ton. I mean, the February dates are, are juicy, but the first couple are just like a weekend, essentially. So I don't know. I, I, I have to imagine that something will come out in like March or April uh, that she'll extend it. A weekend? It's New Year's Eve. Those are big dates. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I get that, but it's not like a long, you know, it's not like several weeks in a row or anything like that. So our last bit of entertainment news, The Sphere, uh, there was some information coming out with their earnings in the last couple of weeks. Vital Vegas did a good write-up, and then Brody Brazil, who's a sports commentator, did a good video about it, just about their mounting losses and how they have to refinance debt in October, and just how they're really not performing as well as expected, and that's because they just haven't filled it up with enough residencies, even if the movie is bringing in a million dollars a day, according to them. But there was some interesting information from his video and again, Vital Vegas article, that's sort of a source as well. So I'll link to both of them. But that they're getting, what, $450,000 a day for advertising on the exosphere, but only $15 million in total revenue for April to June. So at $450,000 a day, 
15 million. I mean, it feels like they're, they could kind of lower that price and open it up to more advertisers, but will that sort of cheapen the experience? Because right now, the majority of the visuals on the outside are not ads, and they don't want to turn it into a full-time billboard. Yeah, I get that. It's a tough, you know, it's kind of like a tightrope to walk there and and you don't want to overdo it. And I, I know they were planning on like, I think they said 100 million a year in revenue and they're shooting more at like 60 million. So I guess you could bridge that gap a little bit. But I don't know, I think they're kind of in a good spot. Maybe you could add a little bit more, maybe lower the price and, and bring on some more people. But I really think they need, just need to have more variety inside. You know, they have the one movie I know we've talked about Wizard of Oz. A, a U2 movie is is coming too. But they need, you know, why don't you have two showings? Like there should be like five or six movies rotation and maybe they'll get to that and just two showings a day at least, you know, and every single day that you don't have a concert going on. And even when you do have a concert, you could have a show, a movie during the day. If it's bringing a million bucks each time, like let's ramp that up and, and you could pay this down. Yeah. So the actual numbers for their fiscal year ending in the end of June, they lost $480 million. A lot of that is write downs and depreciation. But I think the moral of the story is they're not making a real profit here and it costs $2.3 billion to build. So it's a long way to sort of dig yourself out. And uh, I do think that diversifying the stuff is important. Wizard of Oz bringing other stuff. And they did announce a move in that direction by bringing U2 to the sphere, but not U2 the band, but a concert film based on the concert that they did at the sphere. They say that it'll feel like just watching them in person. And I think maybe they can do this with Dead and Company. I think the visuals from Dead and Company, from what I saw, were a step up even from U2, which was amazing. So if they can use those shows that they programmed and then somehow through holograms or something, bring the band back there and charge a lower price. You know, I think that could actually work. And as they get more residencies, maybe they'll do that more often. Yeah, I think that, that'd that be a great option. And like like I said, you know, just previously, if they could do that and then a movie, you have two options every day, something like that. Rotate it, bring fans in uh, year round versus just when they're coming to play a show. So I think it makes a lot of sense. And then you can make some money up if you have to give the bands more of a cut to get them in there. At least you can make it up on the back end with these movies. It does seem like they have more momentum. That's what I would say. They have momentum going. More people are seeing the value in it. That UFC event will be a huge thing for them to kind of showcase how sports will work in there. The NHL draft to kind of open things up there. We're seeing, so it's not quite as full as we would hope, or maybe they would hope, but it does seem like momentum is happening. And there's never anybody who goes in there and says a bad thing about the place. They really did deliver an amazing product. They'd probably be profitable if they left that long bar in there. Yeah, the bar would two $2 billion in drink sales. There you go. Absolutely sure. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to Rio, they've been sending out comps to everybody, apparently, all the old Caesars players. Somebody on Twitter tagged me, he got four free night offer. My wife, who hasn't played on her card, got two free nights with no resort fee. What's interesting is your offer, Mark. You got a masquerade suite. So instead of a regular room, you got a yeah. suite, which is cool. But then they're going to charge you the resort fee. <laughs> yeah. It was like the cheapest thing ever. And it's only Monday through Thursday, I think. So it's a weekday suite. I don't know. It just seems like, hey, we're trying to give you a little bit something nice, but we're also going to be cheap about it. Keep it during the week and we're going to hit you with the resort fee. I don't know. I haven't been in there in, oh man, like 10 years. So I'm surprised I even got anything. I know I'm still on their records and everything, but I, I didn't expect to get anything at all. So I was kind of surprised. But yeah, I, I don't know. Would you rather have a suite with a resort fee or a regular room with no fee? The Masquerade Suite is big and new, but I don't think it's been renovated yet. So I would take the newer rooms, honestly, having been in those suites. But it's surprising to me they wouldn't offer you like a regular room without a resort fee instead. But yeah, this is uh, them sending out offers to old Caesars players. And so if you haven't been there, they're still trying to get you to come in, get you business. I don't understand their marketing strategy where like a lot of people are getting five and ten dollars in free play. I saw that as well recently. And I just don't think that's going to draw people into your casino for ten dollars in free play. And five dollars is just insane. Yeah, five dollars doesn't even get you like a cup of coffee. So what's the point? point so more controversy on social media and this was interesting so jacob from jacob's life in vegas made a bellagio review video and uh, the title was a little sensational talking about how they're misleading people and i don't want to talk about jacob's video specifically but one of the aspects of this was triple zero roulette and how on the roulette table it's usually the casino logo that is there for the triple zero and this isn't just at bellagio this is at pretty much all of the casinos that have triple zero roulette and because this was a huge discussion among big personalities, again, Vital Vegas, Las Vegas, locally, Jacob, everybody sort of weighing in. I've always wondered this, why it's legally allowed for them to do that. It is confusing to people who don't know. Obviously, people who watch this show, us, we would know what it means. 
But if you just think of the average person going up there, shouldn't it just be three zeros? Yeah, it is weird. And and I mean, at least it is on the, the monitor and everything. It shows the logo. So it's not like they're putting the triple zero up there and it doesn't match what's on the table, which would make it even more shady because you'd be like, wait, what, what, where's the triple zero? I don't see it here. So at least those two things line up. So anybody that knows a little bit about gambling, I think would get it, but there's so many people that walk up to roulette tables to just, you know, throw down their 40 bucks or 50 bucks and do like one bet through and, and they don't know what, what that looks like, or, you know, hasn't explained to them. They're like, Oh, is this like some extra bonus? type of thing or what what is this and they don't realize that it lessens their odds the only reason to do it isn't for branding it's to be a little bit deceptive and then they get a little bit of branding in there too i don't like it i don't know why it's allowed it's, it's kind of annoying it really is surprising to me that it's allowed to happen like with all the crazy rules we have and regulations but yeah i do think it is a little deceptive i also think that most people who are into it will notice the difference and i think a lot of people who are hardcore gamblers aren't going to go to triple zero roulette because they know the odds are different. And those aren't the people that are sort of falling victim to this. I hate to say victim, uh, because, you know, a little being proactive is something you should always do in a casino. But it just seems like a, something, an easy fix, make them not have their logo there. And there was all kinds of opinions on social media saying basically people who play triple zero or letter idiots, and people should know better. But you know, not everybody is as into this stuff as we are. And like you said, people just walk up, they want to play. And a lot of people probably aren't even aware of the difference between you know, regular roulette and triple zero and the difference in odds. And if that's the case, you know, how long before we get the fourth zero? Yeah. And I, I bet you, you know, people look at it and they go, oh, that one has two zeros, like a zero single and double. And this one does too. And they don't even really, their brain doesn't register that there's that third thing there. They just think it's maybe part of the table and part of the design. Like they don't think it's a, something you could bet on. I could totally see somebody taking it like that. And I get, you know, some people will call them a sucker and I get that, but you know, we should try to help people as much as possible in the casino. They already have the advantage going in. Uh, I don't think they need even more of an edge. Uh, so it would be interesting to see somebody like push this a bit. Uh, but yeah, it seems like everybody does it. So you can't really focus on one property and say they're the problem. So for our last story, I have to issue a trigger warning for people. You may be triggered by watching this video of the last of the Mirage Volcano. You can see the guts of it. You can see Treasure Island in the background. And yeah, it's just sad. This is pretty stark as I put on Twitter. Ouch. Yeah, I, I want to use this as a, a chance to give a shout out to James in Las Vegas. I feel like half the stuff shared on social media comes from him or hat tips to him. And he doesn't post it himself. He gives it to people. If you want to give it to us, you know, we're here. You can reach out and send it to us. But it's crazy the amount of stuff that he films and takes photos of and shares and, and gets shared by other accounts. And, and usually he gets credit. So that's good. But I'd love to see him do it on his own. Yeah, it's strange. I don't we don't know what he looks like or who he is. But certainly a lot of Vital Vegas content comes from him and always good quality stuff. And keeping up with the kind of day to day of stuff like this construction and uh, things like that. So huge shout out. To him, we always give him credit, uh, even when we're finding it elsewhere. Yeah, there's a couple of people in town that really do that, do such a great job of keeping up with this stuff. And they're not as trying to be as face forward as other people. And they definitely deserve credit for that. And back to the original point of this discussion, it is it's sad to see kind of stark contrast, you know, when it's getting ripped down and torn apart bit by bit. I, we all knew it was coming, but... It's sad to see one of, you know, kind of like a different era of Vegas coming to an end as far as the shows and everything. One of the few things I know we still have the fountains, but th this was kind of like the 90s, early 2000s when you had several of these things and, and the last one to kind of go. So let us know what you guys think about anything we talked about today. Pedicab drivers, the sphere, Janet Jackson coming to Vegas, triple zero roulette with the logo. Is that misleading? Everything else we discussed, huge show today. Leave a comment. We do two shows Tuesdays and Fridays, and we'll be back in a couple days with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. We don't do two shoes, shows on Tuesdays and Fridays. I totally messed up the ending, I know. Work in the Chris Angel ticket booth. <laughs> <laughs>